Davis was ahead on every scorecard, but Baldazar was doing the major damage. Baldazar delivers the left. Davis goes down. We're going to pick up some eighth round action now. And Baldazar waits for his opportunity, picks his spot. Another left. Davis is down. Former Olympic gold medalist Howard Davis Jr. turned out the winner in this lightweight bout with the La Puente's Tony Baltazar, though he was knocked down twice. Winning the gold with Billy after he won the World Cup downhill title in 1978. Clarmer. Atlantic City between Tony Baltazar and former Olympic gold medalist Howard Davis. But immediately after the fight, a controversy broke out. All three judges voted for Davis, giving him a unanimous decision. But the dispute was over the wide discrepancy in the margin of victory awarded Davis by those judges from the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. My major concern is a, it's a, is a disparity in the scoring. That, that shouldn't be. And I, I really think that we have an obligation to find out why. That disparity is clearly visible. New Jersey fights are scored on a round-by-round -round basis. Judge Frank Cairo scored it for Davis, eight rounds to two. Judge Charlie Spina made it 7-3 in favor of Davis, and Judge John Stewart scored it 5-4 for Davis with one round even. Now, CBS Sports was denied access to the judges this week. The final few seconds of the 10th round belonged to Davis, and immediately after the fight, both fighters said they thought Davis had won, but that the final results should have been closer than 8-2 or 7-3. This week, CBS Sports reviewed the fight with Balthazar in Los Angeles and Davis in New York, and their opinions have changed dramatically. 15 seconds left in round number four. When I first heard the scores, I said, wow, you know, I didn't know I beat him that bad. But then, you know, I viewed the films, and then I see why the judges scored it the way they scored it. There's no way I lost that fight. There's just no way. And uh, so the judges that 8-2 to two and 7-3, and okay, they must have been seeing something else. They, I don't know. They, they were all Davis fans or something. Had to be. Now, Lee will review the tapes of the fight with the judges next week. It will then be up to the New Jersey State Athletic Commission, and he is the boss man, Jersey Joe Walcott. He will decide what action, if any, will be taken against any of the judges. But in no case, let me emphasize, will that decision be overturned? But you know, quite often, what the viewer sitting at home and what the judge sitting at ringside see are two different fights. Judges study four categories in scoring a fight. The first factor taken into account is effective aggressiveness. This means more than just advancing on your opponent. It means landing effectively. In this clip, you can see Davis throwing numerous punches at Balthazar, but it is Balthazar who does the damage. He is more effective. The amount of clean hits a fighter lands is also taken into account. Clean hits are scored when a fighter's glove clearly makes contact with his opponent's face or body. In this sequence, Davis is getting through to Balthazar without having his punches blocked. The impact may not be great, but Davis is scoring. Ring generalship is another category for the judges. This is a decision on who is controlling the action. Look at the way Davis dictates the tempo of the fight. He jabs and moves away, forcing Balthazar into a wild counter. Points to Davis for ring generalship. Boxing is also the art of self-defense, and that is a category too. Defense means blocking and deflecting punches while not getting cut or knocked down. While Davis will throw a great volume of punches during this exchange, watch the way Balthazar takes the brunt of the blows on his gloves, minimizing impact. At one point, he even seems to catch one of Davis's jabs. Blunting and countering the opponent's attack are extremely important. So those are the four categories judges take into account. Effective aggressiveness, clean hits, ring generalship, and defense. Now, standing by live, our boxing expert, Gil Clancy. And Gil, is there any tangible way that everyone can look at a fight in the same manner to score it? Yes, I think there is. If you counted the punches in last week's fight, Davis would have been an easy winner. But in New Jersey, the officials are instructed to look for the damage inflicted by punches and the effectiveness of a punch. In other words, if, if a fighter gets staggered and he's forced to hold, that's an effective punch. Or if he knocks a guy down, of course, that's an effective punch. Again, some punches aren't effective at all. And, and in the case of the Davis-Balthazar fight, Balthazar landed most of the effective punches, and that should have been taken into consideration by the officials. Gil, how did you feel about Art Mercanti now stopping your fight a short time ago? A good decision by the official? Yes, I think it was a good decision because uh, Leon Spinks had just become target practice for Sugar D. Leon.
All right, Gil, we want to come back and we want to hear from Sugar De Leon as we continue on CBS Sports Sunday. At 160 and a half and Penn in at 156 and three quarters. Hadley has perhaps fought more prominent fighters in his 15 fight career than has Penn. But Penn with his fine job against Mark Holmes last month. Uh, this is a, a real good shot for him to be seen on uh, national television. Again, Daryl Penn in the red trunks to the left of your screen. Odell Hadley in the white trunk. To talk about so far, you see Penn trying to stay away from that left hand and the left jab of uh, Hadley and is been doing it successfully and then he fights and ties his man up he's not afraid to take a shot to get one in he's a tough cookie but he's a smart fighter and in a lot of ways a patient fighter although we did see him frustrated then again last month against Holmes because Holmes just did nothing but run Hadley's kind of flat-footed and just standing in front of him and letting him come in but again Hadley's got a couple of inches in reach and certainly a good uh, two two and a half inches in height so the shorter fighter having a bit of difficulty with the height of Odell Hadley, and we'll see how that progresses through uh, the middle rounds. You see the positioning is excellent by Penn. As he comes in, he's taking no punishment, and Hadley trying to use his height to uh, wear his man down in the early going here. This guy won't be worn down, I'll guarantee you that. Hadley has a tendency to drop that left arm, which leads him wide open for the right hand. But uh, so far, Penn, uh, the shorter of the two fighters, working to the body with the right hand instead of coming upstairs. Not a bad idea in the early going. Again, Penn in the red trunks, Odell Hadley in the white trunks. Both fighters still fairly cautious, still respect each other quite a bit here. Now you see, as Penn came in, he took a light left to the right side of his head, but he got a pretty good right hand in there. Uh, I don't want to say it was a damaging blow at all because there hasn't been a damaging punch landed in the fight thus far. Neither fighter hurt, neither fighter down. If you've just joined us, we're in round two, as you see, ticking away the closing seconds of round two in a scheduled ten rounder. Seven professional fights. I can't think of anyone else that's going to knock out Red record any better than that. He's knocked out 19 out of 19 of his last 19 opponents. So Jaime Gaza, knockout artist, can hit you with both hands, either hands. He's a tough cookie. You'll see him in action against Bobby Burner for the WBC World Super Bantamweight Championship. Warming up. We danced our socks. Willard! Lord, how could you let our new student eat this food? Oh, don't eat this. Yeah, you know, we have some delicious homemade food over there. Come on over. So good. Yeah, come on. Come on, Willard. Hi. Oh, chicken. Mm. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Bring your friend. You won't get it here. In his 33 straight wins. Introducing and let us welcome Julio Cesar Chavez. There's a bottom on my right fighting out of the white corner wearing gold trunks of the green stripe. Also from Mexico, hailing from Chiapas. An even 134 pounds, a veteran of 14, I should say, 15, 19 professional fights. Romero Sandoval. John Thomas, referee, will now give instructions. Larry Rosatia, numero judging at ringside. All right, so John Thomas calls him to the center of the ring. Let's see if we can hear what he's saying. Pick up too much. But he's reviewing the rules as far as headbutts are concerned inside of three rounds. The case of the Now we can pick it up a bit. All right, let's shake spots. All right, here we go. These will be lightweights. Julio Cesar Chavez and the blue trunks coming from the lower right hand corner of your screen against Romero Sandoval. Here we go. Now Chavez, at the top of the show I mentioned, is the fellow 33-0 with 32 knockouts. I'm unable to find him ranked in the 
Ring Magazine, Boxing Illustrated, or by the WBC or WBA. So he must be some kind of fighter with uh, 32 knockouts and 33 fights. That's Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue trunks. Now, Romero Sandoval is 15 and 4, hails from right here in Los Angeles. Earlier this year, we saw him against the seventh ranked Livingston Bramble. Bramble beat him on a ninth round TKO. That was on the Jerry Kutsia Pinkland Thomas fight. Ten point must scoring system. Again, Chavez in blue, Sandoval in the brown and green. It's almost golden green. Sandoval's a good fighter. He's been in with some of the best in his division. The book on Chavez, of course, excellent right hand. Why with the left hook. This is round one, scheduled 10-round lightweight fight. 